And our last speaker is uh, Ha Yong uh, Song, and she is a, a doctoral student in uh, interactive neuro integrative neuroscience at the uh, University of Chicago. So it must be quite early for her. <laughs> uh, so thank you for being here, and uh, please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm actually um, right now in Korea, so my time is or, okay. Yes, um, thank you everyone for coming in. Um, today, I'm going to present the work titled Predicting Attentional Engagement During Narratives and Its Consequences for Event Memory. Okay, um, so this work is inspired by the phenomenon that every day we experience dynamically changing attentional engagement. So for example, um, imagine a situation when you're watching a movie, listening to a podcast, or having a conversation with your friends. Though these narratives are highly engaging, our attentional state is never constant, but it's dynamically changing across time like this. So um, previous um, theories have defined this narrative engagement as an experience of being deeply immersed in a story with heightened emotional arousal and attentional focus. And quoting directly from 2012 paper, this engagement, which we use so often in our daily lives, is a cognitive state that lacks a rigorous definition in the neuroscientific field. So in order to push forward with this research, we first needed to empirically define what narrative engagement is. Then eventually, um, we were curious to know whether there exist neural signatures that reflect time-varying engagement. And also we wanted to characterize en engagement in relation to the psychological notions that are better understood in the field, sustained attention and episodic memory. Okay, um, so for the experimental procedure, basically what we did was we analyzed two open source fMRI studies, and then we collected um, two independent behavioral data sets. So the first um, fMRI data set that we used uh, was collected by Finn and colleagues where 22 participants listened to a 20 minute audio narrative story um, inside the scanner. And this is called um, paranoia story. And then as the post talk behavioral session, participants did a spoken recall um, in which they were instructed to retell the story in as much detail as they can. And another data set that we analyzed was by Chen and colleagues where 70 participants Again, inside the scanner, they watched the television episode um, of Sherlock for 15 minutes. And then again, this participant did a spoken recall as a post hoc behavioral session. Um, however, the problem with these data sets um, was that we did not know how attentive or engaged these participants were during the study. So um, we wanted to conduct behavioral studies I'm using the same narrative stimuli um, to measure people's dynamically changing subjective engagement. So um, we tried the most intuitive way that we could think of. Uh, we simply asked participants to self-report their dynamically changing engagement. So this was the instruction screen that participants were viewing. So during the task, you will listen to a story. While listening to the story, you will continuously rate how engaging you find the story. So these scale bar was always up on the screen and participants will press right if they're feeling more and more engaged. They're going to press left if they're getting less engaged. So participants had like was able to continuously adjust the scale bar as they listened to the story or watched a television episode. And this was the definition of engagement um, that people saw before starting the experiment. So the definition of engaging was when they're curious and excited to know what's coming up next, when they're immersed in the story, when their attention is focused to the story and they, when they found the events interesting. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you the results for both Paranoia and Sherlock. The x-axis is time duration and y-axis is all the participants. And these are the results. Um, you can see that for every participant, their behavior ratings are normalized across time. And what you can see is that during these moments of time, participants were reporting that they were highly engaged. And you can see that these are quite synchronous across people. So we averaged every participant's behavior responses like this, 
And what we saw was that um, given that these gray um, areas are 95% confidence interval, participants' behavioral ratings were highly synchronous and it was very dynamic across time. So we were curious um, when participants were reporting to be highly engaged versus less engaged. Um, so for example, um, we saw that this very less engaging moment was when Dr. Watson was like casually strolling in the park without any suspenseful event going on. Whereas um, this moment of time was when Sherlock was examining the dead body and trying to find the clues to this mysterious incident. And we also found um, statistically that engagement is increasing when participants were viewing um, emotional moments of the narratives. Okay, um, so from this behavioral study, we observed that engagement is fluctuating across time dynamically. It is synchronized across individuals. And because of syn this synchrony, we were able to apply this group average engagement to infer um, engagement of independent functional MRI participants. Okay, um, so next, our question was whether there is this neural signatures that reflect this time varying engagement. So we wanted to use um, this prediction approach to ask whether just from observing this functional brain dynamics, can we predict people's time varying engagement? Um, so we adopted a method um, of connectome based predictive models, where the goal was to predict this time varying engagement. So um, basically what we did was we extracted this function, time varying functional connectivity, applying sliding window approach for all participants. And then we trained the model like this to understand the relationship between time varying functional connectivity and then time varying group average engagement that were um, defined from independent behavioral studies. And then we applied the model to unheld out participants to see if uh, whether the model by after seeing the unseen participants time varying functional connectivity, whether this could um, predict this group average engagement. And then the prediction accuracy was calculated, calculated like this by taking the correlation between the predicted and observed engagement time courses. Okay. And um, to test for the generalizability of the results and to overcome any potential confounds, um, we made use of the fact that we had this independent data set and then we trained the model um, from all participants in one sample and then tested in an, in an unseen participant at an independent data set. And we turned this across data set prediction. And again, the prediction accuracy was calculated, calculated like this. Okay, um, so this is the in prediction results. Again, uh, we predicted time varying engagement from time varying functional connectivity. And first, um, I'm going to show you the results for within data set prediction. These are the null distribution for paranoia and Shure law respectively. And these are the actual prediction results for all cross validations. And what I have here is the average of these prediction results. And you can see that um, for both paranoia and Sherlock, um, it was significant above chance. However, most importantly, what we observed is that in an across data set prediction, um, both these data sets were significant um, above chance. And what these results implies is that the time varying functional connectivity based models is able to predict engagement across participants and even across independent data sets that contain the different narratives, different sensory modalities, and different pre processing or analysis pipelines. Okay, and we tried, we were curious to know which of the functional connections were important in this prediction. And we observed that not only does engagement network is significantly overlapping between paranoia and Sherlock data sets, but that the functional connections within and between the regions of the default mode network and frontoparital networks were predicting this time varying engagement. So um, next, um, we wanted to understand the relationship between engagement and sustained attention. And um, from behavioral studies, we saw that narrative engagement can be understood as stimulus-driven attention. However, um, what we noticed is that most of the psychological literature studied these fluctuations in sustained attention within the context of these controlled psychological tasks. So um, here, participants were asked to make continuous button presses to streams of visually presented images like this. 
And their research, researchers try to characterize distinct, distinct moments of attentional state um, using people's response time variabilities. And um, previous literature showed that from patterns of functional brain connectivity, um, they can predict this, um, this participant's uh, individual's attention task performance. And we use this um, patterns of functional connectivity, which we would call a sustained attention network. And then we try to understand um, whether this sustained attention network defined during controlled experimental task was able to explain um, this stimulus-driven narrative engagement. So again, here, um, we are going to predict people's narrative engagement using sustained attention network. And this is the within data set prediction. First, for paranoia data set, you can see that sustained attention network was unable to predict people's engagement as people were listening to an audio narrative story. However, interestingly, the sustained attention network was able to predict um, people's engagement as people were watching a television episode, which suggests that sustained attention network, which was defined during controlled visual task, was able to predict engagement during movie watching, but not story listening. Okay, um, lastly, um, we were curious to understand the relationship between engagement and episodic memory. So recalling back to our experimental procedure, we had all participants do a spoken recall. So our, our hypothesis was that given that people's engagement is fluctuating over time, whether people would remember highly engaging events compared to less engaging events. So in order to do this analysis, um, we extracted every individual's recall fidelity time course that indicates which of the events that people were more likely to remember versus did not remember. Okay, um, so here, what we did, um, importantly, important points to note is that we predicted individual specific recall fidelity for every fMRI participants from their individual specific engagement network. And also these characterization of event recalls and engagement dynamics were done separately. Okay, so first for the within data set prediction, here what we see is that people's engagement network was able to predict people's um, subsequent event recall above chance for both paranoia and Sherlock data sets. However, um, we did not find significant results for across data set prediction. So what this implies is that individual specific recalls are predicted from story specific engagement network, suggesting that engagement impacts subsequent event memory. And um, to put it again, so that we remember events that are more engaging. So um, to conclude um, this talk, I'd like to emphasize that this continuous behavior rating is actually a good way of measuring group average engagement. We saw that time varying functional connectivity predicts engagement. And then we also observed that neural signatures of sustained attention defined during controlled task partially reflects engagement to narratives. And lastly, we see that um, neural signatures of engagement reflects memory encoding of the events. And with that, I'd like to thank um, everyone for listening. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors and people who open source the data set and code and your match organizers and my lab members. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for this last uh, wonderful talk. Um, so uh, we have one, uh, one question from uh, uh, Marco. Uh, he compliments you for the nice talk and uh, I join him to in, in this, um, and he asked, uh, "Can you speculate on the finding that the sustained attention network obtained from the visual task is predicted by the movie, but not the auditory task?" Yes. Um, so this was actually a very interesting finding. So um, again, this sustained attention network was characterized by controlled, uh, characterized during. Uh, controlled visual task and the functional connectivity that were um, specifically standing out 
um, to be predictive of sustained attention was um, a lot of the networks were coming from the visual um, sensory networks and also dorsal attention network, which is known to be predictive of like um, visual attention. And we think because these sensory modalities coming from visual, it is specific to predicting engagement as people watch movies, um, but not so much as when people are listening to stories. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That, that was a question that I also uh, that I also wanted to, to ask you. So thank you, Marco, for, uh, for your question. And then, uh, um, okay, there is a question in the chat from uh, Thomas. Uh, since participants had to report their engagement, their response is correlated to their engagement. How this report could impact the neural signatures of engagement? Oh, um, yes. So we, there was actually no problem of um, confounding people, uh, confounding of, from people's like behavior responses because this behavior response was um, collected in an independent behavioral studies. So for the fMRI participants, what they did was they just lied inside a scanner and watching the television show, but this behavioral engagement was um, collected as a separate um, data set from independent participant group. Does that answer the question? I think, was, yeah, I said thanks that I missed that part. <laughs> okay, uh, so I think one last question.